I'm the brand manager at Domtar. Um, part of my responsibilities are, um, well, my major responsibility is creating the strategies that promote our major brands of paper. So the strategies from the ideation to the creative execution, which could be print, digital, or anything in between, and then going through that process and engaging with people to make sure our messages are getting out there. And um, a big, huge part of my job that in order to do all those things is making sure I understand what's going on in the marketplace, right? Because before you create a plan, you have to know who you're talking to. And that's been a huge, huge trend lately in marketing, brand, anything that anyone does, everybody's just trying to tell stories now. So there's a lot of benefits in what you guys are learning here beyond the traditional journalism sectors. It's really, really valuable in a lot of different areas today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and play a short video about Domtar, hopefully. Oh. idea and bringing creativity to life it's in your hardest working hours and in your proudest achievements it's in ordinary things and ordinary places that create extraordinary moments it's there in the times that change your life forever and matter most just look, and we're there. We're Don Tar Paper. Paper, connections for life. So when I was, when I graduated from college, the main thing when you talk to a different advertising agency, they would say, you know, we have copywriters and we have designers, we're gonna do something really creative and we're gonna talk about your product. Now what people wanna do, just like we did in our video, is people wanna tell stories to better connect with other people. So when we actually went to a new agency, a big major agency in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where I live, they we were a Fortune 500 company, so they had the main top people in there trying to sell us their value and wanting us to work with them. And the way that they sold themselves is they said, we don't just have copywriters, we have journalists. They actually use the word journalists to sell what they do, meaning that they dive deep to understand what our goals are, and they also dive deep to understand the audiences, and they create those real connections. Um, and part of what Dontar does, um, we don't just focus on the product. We want to make sure that we are doing, creating the product in the right, right way, but also supporting those communities and giving back and giving people the resources that they need in order to achieve their best work. So a lot of the resources that we have are listed right here. We have a website. Um, it features a blog and an online gallery at, at paper.domtar.com. The gallery is submissions from printers and graphic designers and marketers and brand managers that have used our paper to create something extraordinary that they want to share with the world. So it's a great place to get your next big idea and to stay updated on trends. I use our submissions as a way to stay updated on trends and what people are doing in the industry. Um, we have a great social media presence. We're focused on engaging, not just spitting out messages. We want people to engage with us and so there's a lot of fun giveaways on there. You know, I, I highly recommend you go on there. We have a presence on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And I've supplied some magazines here for you guys. Um, the next issue is going to be a little bit of a shift. It's going to be called Paper Matters Magazine. Um, in the past our magazine was heavily focused on the commercial print side of things. Um, a little bit for marketers, but mainly graphic designers and commercial printers. This new magazine is more holistic. There's a lot more topics, for, you know, pertaining to publishing, you know, marketing, that sort of a thing. So it's a more holistic view as to how people use our paper and tell stories with it. 
I love this topic. This is one of those topics, and actually Anna and I were talking about this a little bit prior to dinner last night, but I could do a whole presentation on the customer journey. So as I said in the past, you know, people were just focused on the moment of purchase. All they talked about was their product, and they talked about the benefits of that product, and there might be a famous person talking about how they like that product. Now people are focused on engaging with the person that they're talking to, and it's sort of the idea of dating someone before you marry them. You wouldn't just go up to somebody and propose. You want to, you know, want to make sure you have that connection, make sure you understand what they're about and they understand what you're all about. So at the very beginning, you know, you make sure they might not even be aware that they have a need, but create that awareness, talk to people, you know, engage with people at different levels. And, through the consideration. Give them things that they need to consider when they're making that purchase. Things they need to consider between different brands. Things, different things to think about before you go into the purchase phase. But then you also communicate to them, you know, and get them to purchase it again and really develop that loyalty. So storytelling, there's a reason it's a hot topic. If you just Google storytelling and marketing, you'll find all sorts of different things pertaining to this. So this is in our next magazine that's coming out. There is an interview with this, this person named um, Stefan Muma. He's a creative director at an agency called First Person in San Francisco. And he's always, before this was, the idea of storytelling was everywhere. He was doing this to create his creative campaigns. So here's a video on him talking about the need to really go beyond demographics and broad groups of people and really understand and have empathy for the people that you're talking to and understand the emotions of what they're going through in order to create effective campaigns. My name is Stefan Luma. I'm the Senior Creative Director here at First Person. Our philosophy here is, uh, is one that starts with the demographics, but in the end the demographics aren't enough. We have to understand what moves the people that are underneath the titles and roles uh, and relationships that they have with our clients and with the products and services of which they sell. We start our stories looking at the humans. We'll have workshops with our clients about their audiences, not about the stories, not about techniques, not about mediums, not about motion graphics or you know, live action shoots, but about their audience. Oftentimes our clients will bring us in for more agency level work because we're starting with the very people with which they want to move. I am simply reminding us that that the context of story and what makes story so effective isn't that it, it allows a linear structure of the conveyance of information. It's that there is a, uh, there's an emotional resonance that story has that we, especially in business, forget exists. And it can have a huge influence on the way that we influence that, that buying behavior. I think the easiest way to think about how you approach your audience is to imagine that you are your audience. How would you want to be spoken to? You would want the brands of which you consume to know who you are. And you would want them to authentically understand what moves you. So that really would be the question. In the end, what moves you? Because whatever moves you, moves them. When, you're, when I'm creating the strategy to get my brands in front of people, um, we, at Domtar we don't promote and just say print is the only way to go because it's, it's not. It's a very important component in the mix, but you need those different elements to really connect to people. You need digital, you need social, but print has specific strengths that can't be ignored. And it commands attention. That's one of the major ones. You have fewer distractions and people spend more time with it. Um, it's a greater sense of trust and authority. You know, people, once they get a printed piece, they trust what they read more, and they, it has that sense of, you know, if they took the time to print it and publish it, there's truth to it, versus people aren't as likely to believe what they read online or in social media. Most of all, it's fun, and I can testify to this. You know, I, I have several magazines that I subscribe to, and it's, it's like Christmas every time they come in my mailbox. You know, those are the titles I love, and I love everything that's in it, and I look forward to, after my son goes to bed, that I can actually spend time with that and really engage with that. Um, and it's personal without being creepy. So there's a lot of great personalization, and Sherry's going to talk more about this, but there's a lot of personal 
personalization you can do with print that a lot of people that, you know, we visited a lot of the brands and agencies that, you know, we visited on Project Peacock had no idea that you can do. They think you can only do it with digital, but with print you can do it and you can do it in a way that doesn't follow you around on the internet. You know, like Google ads well. You can do it in a way where it doesn't feel quite as evasive and it feels a little bit more helpful and a little bit more targeted. So the top four storytelling trends that I've noticed over the last year being out talking to um, people in the industry and also engaging with people you know, in our gallery is um, that people are using print to encourage lengthy interaction, build loyalty, add tangibility to digital, and enhance the intent of a story. So I put this in here, printed books aren't really a trend per se because they've been around forever, but I put this in here because a few years ago a lot of people were thinking that printed books were going away because we have e-readers now and it's, it's way more convenient. You can just carry around this one light little thing and you don't have to lug around these heavy books. But you know, e-readers have slowed and print, printed books are gaining traction again because of the enjoyment of interacting with the printed book. 70% um, of consumers feel they have an emotional connection to it. 60% um, of downloaded ebooks are never read. So imagine how disheartening that is because it takes the same amount of time to create an e magazine versus a printed magazine, right? You're still putting just as much as a journalist into the content, but people are more likely to read and retain it if it's printed. And so these are some great examples. We're very fortunate to be engaged in the publishing community. A lot of the Harry Potter books are printed on our paper. We have um, titles from Stephen King that are printed on our paper. A lot of you know biographies. We have um, Hillary Clinton, um, Steve Jobs. Is an in, was an interesting guy. He actually, this book came out after he passed away, but he specified the paper that he wanted his book printed on before he died. That's how, my, that's how controlling he was over his brand and his identity. So that's just an interesting bit of trivia there. Um, and I love these books. Um, jo Joanna Gaines with the Magnolia brand, she's put out two books so far. Um, Homebody is more of an interior design book. And then she has a cookbook called Magnolia Table. But these books, they tell stories differently than other books in these classifications. The, for instance, the recipe book, it doesn't just have recipes. It has notes from her about you know, how you know, time at the table is spent interacting with her family. And each recipe talks about where she learned it from and the people that she learned it from. So there's a strong t storytelling component. But the images also work together with that storytelling component and with the recipes to create this holistic experience of really engaging with someone that a lot of people admire. And to really get that feeling that you want from the paper, you really have to understand the different sorts of paper out there and make sure that you're spending time thinking about that. Because, you know, just a broad example, you know, coded or uncoded, they have very different look and feel to them. And all of that is a reflection and can add or detract from your story. So trend number two, building loyalty. This is a great example. So a magalog is the idea of tr combining the content of a traditional catalog, which would feature you know, the photo of a product, maybe a brief blurb about it, and the price with the content of a magazine. So this is an example from Canada. This grocery store chain, this is a, a magazine available at each one of their stores, and it features a lot of the stuff you would expect, like coupons, things like that, you know, different um, options for you know, the loyalty members. But it also features really amazing content. You know, like this here is a story about different mushrooms. So after reading this, someone might buy a different mushroom than they normally do and try it in a different recipe. And they even made deli meat look interesting and fun. This was like a fold out and it talked about the different meats and the different options for cheeses. So it's the idea of taking something ordinary and really doing something extraordinary with it and building that loyalty so you go back to this place and you get this magazine and you continue to shop here because they're giving you new ideas so you're not making the same thing for dinner every week. This is also another great one. It's um, Canada Tire. They call themselves a department store, but they have everything. They have tires, they have clothes, they have kitchen appliances, they have everything. So they um, created this magazine that has a storytelling component combined with the images that feature, you know, somebody might be shopping for patio furniture in this instance, but you know, while they're doing it, they might also decide they also need a pillow and they need these gardening accessories and that sort of a thing. So it um, really builds that 
it it has a more fun element than a traditional catalog for sure and it um, also drives demand to different areas. Branded magazines, this is a fun topic. Um, I'm the managing editor of our magazine so I you know I know full well about this. It's a lot of work and um, but it's something that's really on the rise with a lot of different brands. One of my favorites is California Closets Ideas of Order. It's an annual publication and it so California Closets, they make the type of closet organizational systems that, they don't even call them closet organizational systems. Like it's those uh, million dollar listing homes on HGTV where you walk in and there's a chandelier in the closet. Yeah. Like that's the level that they're working on. So they're creating this publication that's driving more loyalty and elevating their brand, featuring people like Martha Stewart talking about her closet. and. It's not a hard sell, it's more about the benefits of organization and how this helps you, you know, in your office, how it helps you work and be more creative, how it helps you in your daily life, you know, choose what you need and, you know, get there and get out the door and ex enjoy your experience while you're in there. So it's a, it's a really different way of talking to your audience and elevating your brand. AIGA Ion Design Magazine. So AIGA is a professional graphic design organization. So they have chapters throughout the United States and they also have a national chapter. This is from the national chapter. It's a magazine that members have to pay for. They don't just send it out to everyone. But it features really, you know, it's almost designed for design's sakes, a very edgy kind of design where you're combining type and imagery together. It's not what you would see in a traditional magazine, but they also have great stories in here and it's done in a way that really is compelling to their members being graphic designers and showing, you know, telling about the issues that are in the industry today, but doing it in a way that is specific to that audience and really engages them. So trend number three is adding tangibility to digital. I love this magazine. This is the Airbnb magazine and this is a company, it's an online company. They're really, you know, they're at the top of their game. They didn't do this to save something that was sinking, but when you're at the top of the game and you've come up with something new, it's only a matter of time if you're only re relying on price and service platform that there's going to be a competitor that comes along and says, I do what they do, but I can do it cheaper, you know? So in order to maintain that loyalty and get people hooked on the brand, not just the service, they created this magazine, and it's a wonderful magazine. It's, um, it's kind of like travel and leisure, but it's specific to the kind of person that would go for Airbnb. It talks about you know things that are off the beaten path, ways to not just visit an area, but live there while you're staying there, you know, and really discover the hidden corners and nooks and crannies in different destinations. So it's, it's a wonderful magazine, and it's done wonders for them in connecting to their audience and building that loyalty. The Magnolia Journal, this came out before the book stood and it was a great way for a successful TV show to give their fans closer access to these people. You know, they um, not just, they don't just talk about, you know, flipping a house and, you know, redecorating. They talk about, you know, their life on the farm and different things they do, the work-life balance. You know, it's a great way to really connect with people that a lot of people admire. This is a great story. So um, Shutter Magazine originally started as a digital only publication. It was created by a photographer and he thought that photographers needed a resource that was relevant to them. To them. So you know, he started with the digital only publication and it wasn't really gaining traction until he came out with a printed version. And the average photographer in the United States makes $39,000 a year, but Sal Sincata, the editor and creator and the photographer in this magazine, makes over 300000 and he attributes a lot of that to the printed version of the magazine. And I got a video of him speaking about the experience. So Shutter Magazine was created about four years ago, and the reason for it was because in our industry, the industry of photography, or let's just say in the creative world, Finding educational content is not always easy. And what I'm looking for, or was hoping for, uh, was to create a publication that gave back to the community, right? No fluff pieces, uh, just straight to the point, down and dirty educational content. So in the early years of Shutter Magazine, it was fully digital. In the back of my mind, I believed that that's all people wanted, that you know, print was dead, uh, and that people were gonna get content when they wanted, how they wanted. And it was really interesting, about two years in, it became so clear 
that people wanted something tactile, something in their hands, just to touch and feel. And not only did our audience want that, I wanted that as well. I found myself printing the cover of the magazine uh, so that I could hang it on my wall. And that became really clear that we had these beautiful covers, this beautiful magazine, but it was digital and you really couldn't enjoy it. What I like about the print version, again, is that tactile uh, you know, feel. I can put that in my hands, I can sit back, drink a cup of coffee, and read it. Now, you could do the same thing on your iPad. It is just not the same experience as holding something in your hand. And we are finding that our audience is responding to that. They want something uh, that's, that they can take away. In fact, we've taken it to a, a new level. The spine of the magazine uh, makes up an image. So over a 12 month window, the spine will put together a single image. And so what we're finding is, is, is our audience has become quite fanatical with the magazine uh, because they want on their bookshelf, they want to be able to look up on the bookshelf and see you know, that final image year after year because it makes up that entire volume. Pool. I truly believe in my heart that print is not dead, that print is something people want uh, we just have to kind of maybe re rethink how we're going to deliver that printed material. So what we've tried to do with the magazine is merge this kind of right printed material. So the rest of that video, it's kind of a long one, but it's on our YouTube site, and there's a wide variety of different videos in there as well. So trend number four is enhance the intent of the story. And so this is the idea of doing um, creative things to make your print interactive. So um, in this annual report here, this is the Adler School of Psychology, and they were engaged with the idea of social change before social change was a buzzword and everybody was talking about it. So they had this unconventional approach. So for their annual report, they wanted to reflect that in a way that doesn't just talk about it, but really sends the message. So this piece here is bound on the top left side on the top, and on the right side here, and you have to perf it in half in order to get two separate books here that tell the story. That's the only way to open it up. So in order to open it up, you have to break the rules and what you would normally do in an annual report. So it just, it's a way to drive home their theme. And this is a great example too. Um, ATI Pulse, it's predictive learning software for nurses, people majoring in nursing school, in other words. So. Um, Throughout their curriculum, they take certain tests and you know record different things that they're doing, and the software helps them predict, you know, oh, so this is an area where I need to spend more time and learn more, and this is an area that I'm great at. Maybe I don't spend as much time focusing here. Just different things people can do before before they come to the end of their curriculum and they're taking that test and suddenly they can't pass. It's a way to help them throughout the whole schooling process. And the way this was presented in a sleeve, you know, the text is jumbled here, you put it in here and it's very clear. It's just a metaphor for how ATI Pulse, you know, brings clarity to the people that use it. This is one of our promotions. Lynx was a brand that we were um, not necessarily reviving, but it was one that you know, people didn't understand all the things that it's used for. So we wanted to say that in a strong way and we added this zip strip here and this piece is called Explore Links, Explore the Possibilities, Explore all that it can do, Explore what it can do for images. And in order to open this piece, you have to tear down the zip strip in order to explore the pages inside. So we just did that, you know, to give people um, an engagement aspect of it so that they're more likely to interact with what's in, on the inside of the piece. So one thing that I've learned since graduating from school is that, you know, learning doesn't stop when you graduate. It just becomes different. You have to stay up to date with everything going on um, in order to be better because I've never been promoted just doing my job really well that I had at that point. I've been promoted by, you know, knowing what's out there and bringing new ideas to the table and really, you know, bringing new perspectives. So in order to do that, you really have to stay updated with what's going on so you can bring those new ideas back. And our website, again, is a great resource, paper.domtar.com. Be sure to go on there and subscribe to our magazine. It's a complimentary subscription, and you will get two a year. And uh, I'm Ashley Madak, again, and I'm on LinkedIn, and I'd love to connect with any and all of you. So thank you so much for your time. Yay.